Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be swapping the pickups on this Gibson Les Paul Studio. This beautiful Gibson Les Paul Studio here. Um, it's got some Seymour Duncans in it and we're going to swap it over to some EMGs. The EMG 8185 set. So if you plan on throwing some EMGs in your Les Paul, then this is the video for you. For this demonstration, we're going to be using the standard Les Paul wiring where this is the bridge volume, the bridge tone, the neck volume, and the neck tone. All right, the first thing to do is going to be to remove the strings, which I've already done here. If you have a guitar that you have really like the setup and the action on, you're going to want to tape this piece here into position because this will be removable once you take the strings off. As well as the bridge here, you can just remove it right off the back. It should slide off. This one's not wanting to come off, so I'm not going to force it. On your guitar, if it comes off, you don't even have to take the strings out. But for this one, we're just going to move the strings down to the side here. And we'll coil them up. I would normally replace the strings here but my customer said that these are new strings and just reuse them. Just to be extra careful so nothing gets scratched, we're gonna wrap it in a soft towel and then throw it in a Ziploc. Now we're gonna flip the guitar over. Now we'll remove this back cover. Now that we have the rear control cavity opened up, we wanna identify which cable is going up to the pickup selector switch. We have these two coming in which are for each of the pickups and then we have this gray one down here that goes all the way through the guitar up to the pickup selector switch. We're going to reuse this cable here but these ones are going to come out with the pickups then we're going to remove all the pots and the output jack. All this will be replaced with EMG's 25k pots and a stereo output jack. Next we're going to disconnect the output jack so we'll start by unscrewing the control plate The next important thing to do is figure out which color is associated with which pickup. So I can see this down here would be the bridge setup and we have the red wire coming from the selector switch going to the bridge. Now we have the white wire from the selector switch coming up to the neck setup. This guitar has one of these Les Paul shielding plates in it which we're going to remove because it's not really needed at all with the EMGs. Next we're going to desolder the pickup wires. So each one of the volumes has a set of pickup wires. This is the bridge pickup setup, wiring going to that pot, and then the next stuff is all up here. So we're just gonna desolder all the wires that are connected for the pickups, so then we can remove the pickups. Next, we're going to remove the pickup ring screws and remove the pickups. It's these four corner screws. You don't have to do these two yet. And if you're going to reuse your pickup rings like we are here, you're going to want to remove these two screws now, which are going to set these two springs loose and then remove the pickup. So notice how it's stacked right now. We're going to have to put the spring back inside there when we put the new pickups in. At this point, if you can't distinguish which one's the bridge and the neck pickup, you might want to mark them on the back. These ones are actually labeled with a part number and it tells you bridge and neck model. So we're going to leave these ones unmarked, but this is a good time to do it if your pickups don't have that. You'll also notice the ring thickness. The neck pickup uses a thinner ring. The bridge pickup uses a thicker ring. They're also angled, so it gets smaller as it gets closer to the neck and thicker at, at the bridge. So you're gonna wanna make sure you keep that right when you put the new pickups in. Now would be a good time to wipe down the surface of the guitar and clean underneath where the pickup rings normally sit. All right, for this reinstall, we're gonna be using the EMG 81 in the bridge and the 85 in the neck. So it's like a Zach Wilde style setup. So that means we're gonna put the 81 into the thicker housing or pickup ring. This is also a good time to change your hardware that's gonna hold the pickups in because you can't just unscrew them later without taking out the whole housing. The spring is gonna be in there and it's gonna make the pickup fall down and you're gonna to have to take out the four corner screws and reset it. So if you can match these to your hardware now, that's the best thing possible. EMGs come with chrome or black sometimes, um, but this guitar has black hardware. So we're gonna use black pickup mounting screws and it's gonna make it look really good. Also, now that the screws are out of the ring, 
get some guitar polish and just wipe them down real good. You'll be surprised how much better they could look. Now, like I was saying earlier, you can see it's thicker at the bridge end where the EMG logo is. And this is going to be the bridge pickup, so that's going to drop right down in there. And then we're going to do the same thing with the neck pickup, too. The EMG logo is going to go down with the thicker edge down there. By the way, if you like the electric screwdriver that I'm using in this video or any of the other tools I'm using, check the description down below. I have some links to where I got some of these tools from, and if you buy directly from my Amazon links, it benefits my channel. If you do decide to change your pickup rings while you're doing all this, and you're doing it on a Les Paul with an arch top, make sure you get arched pickup rings so that they fit flush onto the body. If you buy flat rings, they're not going to sit on there. They won't bend down and conform to the body. Another thing is replacements might not fit 100% perfect, so you might have to fill in a hole or two and re-drill. And you might end up with gaps in certain places, so... If you can reuse the original ones, it's better to, but if they're cracked or broken, then definitely try to find some replacements. Next, we're gonna insert the cables for the pickups. This set came with one longer and one shorter pickup cable. The longer one's gonna go all the way to the neck, the shorter one will go to the bridge. You wanna leave the side with the three connections in one connector. That's gonna go to the pickup, while the other side has two separate connectors here. So this one's gonna be just for your power and this one's gonna be for your hot and your ground. Notice that I'm routing these cables from the front of the guitar to the back. The reason is because the connector that goes to the pickups is larger than the connector that goes to the electronic cavity. Routing the larger connector through the body can be difficult and even routing the smaller connectors through the body can be difficult. In some cases, the holes that run through the guitar are too small for those connectors and need to be drilled out but 80% of the time, it should fit. Now another little trick I always do is to put a little piece of tape on the end that's going into the control cavity of each of these cables. So for the bridge, I'll use a small piece of blue tape, and for the neck, I'll use green. This is really just to help identify which pickup cable goes to which pickup once the two cables are in the back cavity. The reason I use blue for the bridge is because they both start with B, and that's just easy to remember. When you plug the cable onto the pickup, Make sure that you can see the little arrow on the connector. There's a small arrow there, and that needs to be visible when it's plugged in. This is very important. If you get this wire backwards, the pickup's not going to work right. And now we'll do the same thing to the neck pickup. You might notice that these screws are all different lengths, and there should be some that are longer that would go down towards the bridge, and some that are shorter that'll go up towards the neck. Don't over tighten these screws, you can easily break the plastic ring. Next we're going to remove the volume knobs and tone knobs. So here we have one uh, knob that the nut is missing. That's interesting. It's not under there on any of the volume knobs or tones. Uh, it looks like it was just kind of jammed in there, like it maybe didn't even fit in that hole. It's probably installed on the plate that's installed in the guitar, there's a ground plate, so in a minute we'll find out about that. But now let's remove the nut on the other three. Oh yeah, that one was hardly caught either. Interesting. This isn't the original wiring, I'm pretty sure, because the Seymour Duncan pickups aren't original to this guitar. Now on the other side, we're gonna disconnect the pickup selector switch cable that's coming across. Again, make sure you've noted which color goes to which pickup. This whole plate comes right out. We're not going to be reusing any of this stuff for the EMG install, so this is your little souvenir, your little trophy you can stick up on the shelf to tell people, I rewired my Les Paul. <laughs> okay, now we have a nice open cavity here. We can install our EMG pots, get our EMG output jack installed into the, the little plate, and start wiring it up. So for the bridge pickup, we're going to use these short shaft volume and tone pots. But for the neck, it's actually at a thicker part of the guitar, so we're going to have to use these long versions. That's what we're going to need for this guitar. So I have a long volume and a long tone here that we'll be using to go up into these top two holes. So to get the height right, 
You'll want to slide the nut on first. And then we're going to go with a lock nut. So that's going to go on next. We'll slide that through the hole and then peek around to the front and see how much is showing. Right now it's not even coming through, so we'll pull it back around to the back. And we'll tighten this down quite a bit more. Maybe one thread showing. Slide on the washer. And we'll slide on the nut. And here this looks pretty good. So we'll start with that. Slide the washer on. Then the nut. We'll tighten it down real quick and see what it looks like. All right, these knobs do not fit these EMG pots, so we're gonna have to replace the knobs now too. I'll use this other metal knob as a gauge on how high to put the pot. I could see it could still come down a little more. So for the volume, it looks like we're gonna be all the way tightened down with our first nut. Then the lock washer. So now we'll put our flat washer on top and the top nut. Tighten it down with a 7 16 inch wrench. Don't over tighten it, but you need that one to be nice and snug. And now we'll do the same thing for the tone. Don't forget that lock washer. You basically want your knob to be as low as possible without hitting the body. Okay, now we have the four pots installed. Everything is pointed so the volume and the tones are facing each other. Of course, this is the bridge volume and tone, the neck volume and tone. And we're gonna simply wire up the pickup wires. So the blue one, blue, blue stands for bridge. They both start with B. We'll take that tape off now. This, this wire is a little long, so we're gonna actually peel back the power to about right there where it comes out of there. And then we're gonna run it behind the volume pot here so it'll take up some of the slack and this will come out the power will come out over here and the black and white wires will come out nice and easy perfect little spot to plug in this is the official EMG diagram and it's a little confusing I don't like it because it shows the volume positions pointed with the wires coming out to the left and the tone positions also coming out with the wires to the left which is not how they fit in the guitar with the volumes in this position, really you should be looking at it upside down like this. But then you have the bridge on top and the neck on bottom, and that doesn't make any sense either. So I went ahead and made this diagram here that you can download. It's in the link in the description below. And I'll be referring to this drawing for this video. Now we have our neck pickup. We'll remove the tape off that. And we'll do the same thing with this power. We're going to pull it off there, and then we'll route this one over here to the neck volume and plug it on so that you can see the arrow on it. There's a little arrow here on the connector. Again, you wanna make sure that you put it on the two topmost connection points of the volume. Now we're gonna take the EMG control bus. So here on the side of the bus, we have bridge in, which is gonna be the bridge pickup, neck in for the neck pickup, and out for the output jack. And real small on the top here, or on the bottom, however you look at it, you can see BW, BW, BW. That's black, white, black, white, black, white. So the cables, you want to make sure you put the right color on those or it's going to reverse the phase and the pickup's not going to work. We're going to mount this by pulling off the back adhesive sheet and then we're just going to stick it right up here on the top. And it's going to leave us a ton of room down here eventually when we put in the battery. Now we'll take the two red wires and we're going to plug them onto that bus, onto this red strip here. Next we'll take a couple of these black and white cables that come from EMG that have the two position connectors on the ends. And we're going to plug one into the volume pot. Be sure to plug it on with the arrow on the connector pointing out so it's visible to you. And since this wire is going to the tone, it needs to be connected to the bottom position of the volume pot. So now we have our cable connected to the volume pot and we're gonna run it over here to the tone. If you notice in the video, I actually have a couple of these cables mixed around and at the end I realized and it wasn't working. So if you notice some of the cables in this video aren't in the right spot, that's why. 
Now we're going to do the same thing for these volume and tone. Next, we're going to use another set of black and white cables, and we're going to run them from the volume over to the bus. These connectors will plug into the middle position of the volume pots and run over to the bus. Remember, the bus has labels for each pickup. And just kind of tuck all that back there, creating nice little loops so that no wires are getting pulled on, no wires are getting stressed. And you can do kind of little bends in there, and then kind of give the bend some relief but the bend will help direct the wire where you want it to go. Now for the bridge cable. So you're gonna to wanna to keep your wires nice and tight and pushed in because later on you're gonna to need to put a battery somewhere in here, wrap it up with some padding, and you don't want it to be pushing on the wires, so keeping this little area open here is gonna be perfect for that. Now we pulled the bus here off the wall, and here we have the cables that were from the pickup selector switch. So we're gonna wire these over to the spots here on the front of the bus. So that's why I pulled this bus off the wall because they're gonna go right into these little spots here. These are a little long, they're only gonna be going to right here, so I'm gonna cut about an inch off them. Now we'll restrip all the ends. We wanna strip them about 3 16 of an inch. Now I took a photo of this earlier, so I knew the bridge wire here is the red wire coming from that cable and the white wire comes up to the neck setup. The green and the metal bare wire are both grounds and the black is the hot wire. Over here, we have bridge, which is gonna be the red wire, neck, which will be the white wire, and then output, which is gonna be the black wire. Then we'll do the ground and the green wire over in these last two ground spots. All right, now the control bus is wired up and everything looks good. Connections are secure. One thing I don't like is this shield wire. It's just going right across, you know, in, in the right situation, it could come down and hit one of these terminals on the pot. So I'm gonna take a piece of electrical tape and just put that right down over the pot. Nothing too crazy, just keeping it insulated. All right, and that should be good there. Now we'll wire up this connector here, which is gonna be the battery clip it has a red thing on the other side and this plug that's gonna to go to the output jack. So I'll actually run this over to the output jack out like that. So that's about where it's gonna be, is right here flush with the body, almost flush with the body. So that's how much cable we're gonna have. I'm gonna take this block off this side and it comes right off. You would use that for other applications, but this one we don't need it for because we're using the bus and plug this red wire right in here. This is the little wire setup that's gonna make it so when you unplug the guitar, the battery doesn't continue to run for the EMGs. It'll be a switch to turn off the EMGs and the battery stop running. Anytime the guitar is plugged in, it's gonna run on the battery. So when you're done playing every time, you wanna make sure that you unplug the guitar from the output jack because that's gonna kill your battery if you don't. This is EMG's diagram for a Les Paul style guitar, and you can see the output jack over here. If you orient yours exactly like it looks here, with this long prong and this other prong on the right hand side, you'll see you have three terminals here to wire up to. The one from the 9 volt battery is going to be up on this one. It's called the ring. That's what R stands for. Here we're going to have a pair of wires coming over from the output jack. And on one end is a connector, the other end has these two plugs. These two plugs will go on to the output jack here. So you could see S means sleeve, and that's gonna be the black wire. The one with the white wire on it, you could see right here, is gonna be the tip. So let's go ahead and put this one in here. Output wire. So we got the black one on the left, like the B, the white one on the right, like the W and we're gonna run this one over to the output jack. Run them all the way out and let them hang out the, the outside of it a little bit. So again, looking at this diagram here, we're gonna plug all this stuff in. This is the one from the nine volt battery. Then we have the ground from the bus and the hot from the bus. And now we can simply push this right back up 
and screw it back in. All right, so it's all wired up now, everything's good. And we're gonna put a little bit of foam inside there. You can use the packaging that comes with the EMGs. And we're gonna secure the battery so we don't have a battery rolling around or hitting into anything. We don't want anything like that. So we'll put a little bit of foam around it, make it secure, put our back cover on there, and then get this thing restrung. I recommend testing it before you go restring it all right now. Another thing you're going to notice is when you go to replace your stock knobs, they don't fit. The threading and the size of the EMG pots is different than the, the stock ones from a Les Paul. So we're going to have to switch these to the EMG branded ones, which we have here. I've already tested one of them out, that's why there's only three, and it works perfect. Now when you look real close, you'll see... There's a tiny bit of difference in color between the original ones and the EMG ones. But other than that, I mean, they look very good. Almost a perfect replica, but you can see this one's got more of a cream tone. This one's got more of a, a bluish hue to it. I don't know if when they're brand new, maybe they look the same because these are the original Gibson ones and these ones are super old. As you can see from the guitar's body, this thing has had a ton of color aging to it, which makes it look really cool. It looks like one of James Hetfield's Explorers. When you go to put your knobs back on, make sure you turn them all the way up and then look at them and determine where you want the 10 to be when it's all the way up. Some people like the 10 to be straight up. Some like it to be pointed at them so that you can see it when you're looking down at the knobs and it's pointed straight at you. Here I'm performing a little test to make sure the pickups work before I go and start restringing everything. What I do is one at a time I go through each pickup Make sure that as the volume goes up and down, the pickup is reacting to being touched by a screwdriver. I'll test each one of the volumes and each one of the tones, and then I'll switch it over to just each one of the pickups one at a time, make sure everything's working perfectly. And it was at this point that I realized something was wrong. As I said earlier, you could see that I had a couple of the wires plugged on wrong, and I realized I had a few of them backwards because I was using the EMG diagram, and I hadn't made the diagram that I posted in this video yet. So I suggest you use my diagram because it's oriented the same way that you see everything inside a Les Paul. All right, guys, there we have it. The guitar is restrung. Sounds great. You could test it by hitting your volume, turning your volume down, adjusting the tone, flipping it up to the neck. Thanks for watching guys if you haven't seen it already go check out the video where i rewired this guitar and talked about it a little bit on trash to thrash um hit the subscribe if you enjoyed this leave me a comment down below hit the like button and have a good one my friends rock on